What is up, creator? It is awfully good to see you. We're going to learn today how to add Facebook Live comments to OBS while streaming at Facebook Live. The best system, the easiest system, and the most robust system is to use Restream.io. Check out all the fantastic formats that they give you. They're animated for your live stream. I'm going to show you how to use these. I'm going to show you why I came to the decision that this is the easiest method. Let's get some. I want to give a shout out to some great members of the Alliance of Video Excellence, which is our community here. One is Defrost1978, Joe Magaboo, and Kenneth Pasqua all made the suggestion to dig into and understand and explain how to place Facebook comments during a Facebook live stream with OBS. Now, let me tell you, I thought this was going to be super duper easy to do. You know, it's like, oh, I can pull this off. This has got, there's got to be a tool out there at obsproject.com that we could find. And there was one called the Facebook comment overlay and uh, started researching it and like, oh my gosh, I got to go into Facebook and pull out IP IDs, app IDs and this ID and that ID and, and all these crazy steps. And then I realized, do we have to do this every single time you create a live stream? And I thought, man, there's just no way I could go down this route for for my audience. You know, they're looking for an easy and congealed sort of tutorial and to explain this would take forever. So I trashed that idea. And then I moved on to the Streamlabs approach, which seemed at first to be very simple and easy. They provide several different themes that you can use with your comments, right? And they have a really great widget URL where you just copy the URL and bring it in as a browser source into OBS. But I could not get it to work. I tried everything, and I'm talking everything as far as actually going into Discord and talking with support directly and we could not get it right. And I popped out of that and went back into their website and started reading as to why. And they started suggesting, uh, you know, turning off my firewall and getting into the security protocols. And I'm like, that's it. No way, no way. And at that point, I pretty much gave up on the whole video, which was a bummer because I put a lot of work into getting it prepared before I even start to produce. So, wow, <laughs> I was really frustrated and I made a comment on my comment page. This, is, this gives you an example of how much work this channel is put a comment in my community section and three people responded three creators right away trevor bagnell dj king and ghost mode they said dude you gotta try restream.io and i thought wow you know they reached out to me in the past and i've never really researched the website and i started getting into it taking a look at what they had to offer and sure enough it works and not only does it work well but they provide more available themes to use. They have over 20 themes versus uh, Streamlabs. They only offer like six or seven. So Restream.io is superior. This tutorial not only will teach you how to do this with Facebook, but you will also learn how Restream.io works. So you're gonna get a lot of value out of this video. Now you know what I go through and now you know why I've chosen Restream.io to pull this task off. Let's get into it right now. Okay, first things first, make sure that you're logged in to Facebook, okay? Number two, make sure that OBS is up and running. Upon you getting that all worked out, what we're gonna do here is connect Restream.io to your Facebook account, and upon successfully connecting that, we're going to go into OBS Studio, and we're going to connect to Restream in such a way that dockable control panels appear, three of them, but we're really interested in one, and that is the one responsible for creating the comment window as a browser source on OBS. So this one doc will show up and give you a URL that contains all the parameters that you set, you know, the, whether the background's transparent, the text size, all that cool stuff. Once that's created, you copy the URL out of there, you create a browser source, you put the browser source into your live stream window, and you're good to go. So let's get started. Okay, we have logged into Facebook. Okay, so there's my Facebook account. And now I'm going to go into Restream.io. And on the left here, it'll say new to Restream, click sign up. Now I got to warn you, I have deactivated my account so I could show you this process. This is sort of like a one take kind of video. And at this part, it's been a little bit while since I've done this. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, click sign up and enter in your information. Okay, I'm going to click sign up now. Okay, I'm going to click Add Channel, and I'm going to select Facebook Live. And now I'm going to click Connect Facebook. Now, 
here's something that is interesting because I've always wondered where the paywall is. There's got to be some way these guys make money. And one of those ways is if you select anything other than your personal profile page on Facebook. For example, I've got one called the Alliance of Video Excellence, right? If I select this one, then they're going to want $19 a month. So unless you're willing to spend that kind of money, you're going to have to only use your personal profile page as where the stream will be sent. If you want to send it to a sub page from your account, it's going to cost you $19 a month. Okay, I just want to let you know that. So personal profile selected, I'll hit save. And that is it. That is it. So now I'm connected to Facebook. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, at this point, the only thing you really have to do is go into update titles and put your title in there. Okay, if you're providing gaming content, obviously you'll want to slide that. I think it changes some of the performance of the live stream, maybe reduces the lag a little bit. I'm not sure. I haven't worked around it just yet. Hit update all. Then what I want you to do is go into OBS Studio. I'll go into settings and I will select stream and make sure that you select restream.io and this is what the you have to do it this way in order to get what I'm about to show you do not select use stream key select connect account and it will give you a login prompt and this is where you enter your information okay well you're going to log in watch what happens you're gonna to want to hit allow and it will apply and when you hit apply what it does is it creates three dockable control panels. Stream information, this thing called multi-stream, which for now is only Facebook. And then the other one is what we want to pay attention to, and that is the chat window. Whoops, see how it wants to dock into a certain spot? If it does that by mistake, you can just click the double window right here and it pops right out. But because it's OBS, it's going to want to try to attach it to a specific area. I'm going to turn these off for now. Hit OK and knock that one out. Hit OK. I just want to worry about what's going on here in the chat box window. OK, so what we want to do is we want to click Settings in the lower right hand corner. See that Embed in Stream? Click that. And this is the window. This is what provides all the settings that allows us to modify what we want to see in regards to the theme, which is right here. We have all these awesome themes, over 20 of them. Basically, it's um, just over 10 individual styles. Like, for example, we have Fortnite Boxed, right? If I click that, we also have a version that's compact. So watch, Fortnite Box gives us this look, right, which is pretty slick. But if you want to compact it so that you see more comments, just select the next one down, which is Fortnite Compact. And then when you see that, it squeezes in uh, more comments for you. If you have a lot of traffic on your live stream, this would probably be the better, the better bet. And another one that you're going to want to pay attention to is the chat background opacity. So you're going to probably going to want to turn that all the way to zero, which will eliminate that blue background for you. So this means that it relieves you from the need of going into OBS and setting the blue color as a transparency in filters. So this, this does it for you automatically with cascading styles, which is way better and way easier to modify. And it just gives you more flexibility. And there's no artifacts that, you know, it's just so much cleaner and so much better. And you can still see shadowing on some of these themes that it provides. Another one that you may want to play with is this message alignment. It has a top or bottom. So I guess it's aligning it to the top or bottom. I guess when you're starting out and, the, and it starts to fill in, as you can see here, it's, it fills in from the bottom, which is kind of cool. That's kind of trick. Scale's another good one here. Let me um, turn the background back on so that we can see this thing better and I'll make it come in from the top. And you can begin to see the scale right here, so you can make it larger, which is kind of nice. I'm not a big fan of you know small text for, for, for comments, because it's good for everybody to see it. I just think it should be a little bit larger than what most people set it as. Maybe that's because I'm an old fart, I don't know. Um, and then here, of course, we have the browser source URL, so all I have to do is click Copy, and then click the plus sign under sources and select browser. And I'll type in comment box. Okay. Paste in that URL. I'm going to set it at a width of 800 and a height of 600. I'll make it 800 by 800 and make it a square box. 
use custom frame rate, control audio via OBS. I'll keep those clicked. I'm going to take this stuff out. We don't want to modify any CSS. Shut down source when not visible. Yes. Refresh browser when scene becomes active. Absolutely. That's very important. Check that off. Hit OK. The reason why this setting is crucial is because if you don't see the changes that you're making to the browser source via restream.io, the best way to get it to show the changes is by leaving the scene containing the browser source and then coming back in, which forces what's called a refresh or a re-grab of your changes. That's why it's important. And there's the box. And there's our test comment right there. So it is functioning from the perspective of the test. I'll slide the box over here so that we can continue to see it in OBS. Okay, the next step is to initiate the live stream at OBS. Then we'll go back into Facebook, make a comment on the live stream, and see if it shows up on OBS. Okay, while in OBS, click Start Streaming in the lower right-hand corner. You should see a green square appear. There it is. And now I'm going to go back into Restream. Okay, it says we're live. Let's just go, maybe it says we're live. Let's go into Facebook and see. There we are. We are live. Now let's put a comment in there and see if it's working. Test. One, two, three. Hit enter. Comments there. Will it pop up in preview? It will take a little while. Let's see if it comes in. I'll put another test in there. Let's go back into OBS and see us. There it is in OBS. That means it is transferring. Let's go back into Facebook and see if it's there. It's There is a delay. There is a good amount of lag. We're waiting. We're waiting to see it. Will it appear? The lag is intense. I've got the mic turned off. There's the first comment. Test one, two, three. If I go to full screen here, we'll see it. There we go. Boom. Test. That confirms that now we are taking the comments from a Facebook Live, putting it into OBS, and pumping it back out to the Facebook Live stream. Now, if you're interested in understanding how to make this window three-dimensional, I'm going to help you understand how to install a special plugin that does it for you. Click right here, and I will catch you over there. This is a cool plugin. You're going to love it. Regardless, I wish you all the luck with your channel. Best wishes. Stay strong. I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah.